friends, it's Linda at Flourishing Table. I don't have my apron on. I just got back from a seven mile bike ride. So I'm in my workout clothes. And um, I figured, you know what? Why get all dressed up when everybody's probably in their workout clothes right now? Or some of you didn't even get dressed and showered today. So I'm just being me. And um, a friend of mine said, oh, are you gonna go on this afternoon? And I, I was thinking, Maybe you guys have had enough of me already today, so um, I hope uh, that's not the case, but I am preparing, again, something very quick and easy. It's a family favorite, something that my daddy <laughs> was famous for, and our family called it shrimp oregano. So um, I'm gonna actually serve it, not with pasta, I'm gonna serve it with farro. I'm gonna make like a Greek farro salad to eat with the shrimp oregano. And this is something that actually I cook in the oven. Hi, Raquel, honey. <laughs> so I don't have my false eyelashes on anymore or my crown. Now I have on my workout clothes. So uh, forgive me for being so casual. Hey, Sheila, honey. Okay, so let's get started because Sheila actually has had my shrimp oregano and I know it's one of her favorite. Hi, hi, hello, everyone. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. This is. This is so easy. I know I say that with everything I make, but you know, my mommy was an incredible cook. She, uh, oh my gosh, my hair looks crazy. She was an incredible cook. My grandmas, my grandpa, it was a family effort. Everybody joined in uh, to prepare the meal. And my grandparents lived upstairs. That's the way we did it in Long Island. And it was really a blessing. So um, this just reminds me of so, so many people in my family. So we're gonna start with Evie, oh, oh olive oil it pretty much goes in everything I make so I'm gonna go around a couple of times probably about a quarter of a cup I'm going to take my Italian fresh chopped parsley I already prepared that you know one of the things about um, I swear people that know me they think how do you have so much energy how do you get so much done in one day I swear it's the Holy Spirit. I, I feel like the ever ready bunny. Wait one second, I forgot something. Need my little trusty spoon. So um, I do, I feel like the ever ready bunny. I feel like the Lord has given me so much energy and I'm grateful for that. And you know, honestly, I always tell women, God is a God of order. When I get up in the morning, first thing I do is make my bed. If you can't make your bed, you pretty much can't get out of it. So <laughs> start with making your bed. And I always tell my ladies, you know, when God gives us something, whatever it is, even when I had my two room apartment in Elmont above my in-laws home, I took care of it. I took, I took pride, I was grateful for it. And I remember um, putting my music on on a Saturday morning and cleaning and just being so grateful that I had this, this little home. Phil and I started our life that way. And you know, through every home, whether big or small, um, this is probably one of the smallest ones I've lived in in a long time, but you know what? I'm so grateful for it. It's my sanctuary. Your home should be a reflection of your heart and the things that you love, the colors you love, things that reflect you. And, um, and because um, I think how, you know, my parents came from the Depression era and, you know, things didn't come easy for them, so they really, my mom really taught me from that perspective. So I never took anything for granted. And whatever I have, I really looked at it as a gift and a responsibility to care for it. And you know what? If there came a time where I didn't need that treasure anymore, then it was my blessing to bless someone else with it and hope that they would enjoy it as much as I did. So, uh, you know, the thing again about being a homemaker, it's a privilege. I, you know, I don't think it's old fashioned. I think it's something that the Lord has gifted us as women to to bring life to a home. It's, it's not just a house, it's a home. And you know, home is where the heart is. So what a beautiful thing that, um, again, I think, I, I got a lot in my day today. I, I start her off in the Word, best place to be, listen for the voice of God. He directed me to do, you know, um, the Bible study, God is our King and we are His Princess. And some of you joined me there this morning and had my crooked crown on and my, my crooked false eyelashes um, and I, I had that time with you and that was wonderful and then I actually someone um, 
asked me if I'd bake them some banana bread. So I, I whipped up some banana bread and they came and picked it up. And then I went for my, my bike ride and you know, and now I'm in my kitchen again. I'm in my workout clothes. I got my lipstick on and uh, I'm gonna be preparing this nice little meal. So, okay, so we started with shrimp. I like to get a nice size shrimp. Don't get those little puny ones. Get that, you know, I'm sh I probably like 20 to a count, I'm thinking. So you see the size of them, they're nice and meaty. And I drizzled them with olive oil, Italian fresh parsley. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm actually using, oh, let me find it. Picorino Romano, of course, some grated cheese is gonna go in this. I'm using panko because that's what I have available. And it's flavored, um, some, you know, Italian flavored panko. If I had regular breadcrumb, I actually like to do a mixture of both. But since I just had panko, um, this has, you know, like garlic and dried parsley in it. And I put about a quarter cup of the grated Picorino Romano in there. So I know that sounds weird to have, you know, shrimp with cheese, but trust me, it's pretty amazing. So now um, I'm also gonna squeeze a little lemon in this. Now I don't always put lemon, but because I'm giving it a Greek twist, I'm gonna add a little lemon. So I'm gonna put it, we're just gonna squeeze some on. I took my pits out already, so we don't have that issue. Okay, so I'm just giving it a nice, half a lemon is fine, okay? You can put a little bit of salt, not too much because, you know, they come from the ocean, so they're naturally seasoned, just a touch. Now you can also put a little hot pepper in this, red pepper flakes, but that's not really my thing. So I'm just going to work with the garlic. Where is it? Where's my garlic? I almost forgot my garlic, the most important ingredient. So I am using that puree garlic that I like, and I actually put a little olive oil in here to just um, embrace those delicious garlic flavors. So I'm using a heaping, and I actually might add a little more. Let me see. I want that garlic to really, um, you know, coat the shrimp. It, this is such an easy thing. Okay, so can you see that? So my garlic is nice and coated with the olive oil and the fresh Italian parsley. And now I am going to, I'm going to move this. You're going to be so impressed. You're not going to believe how easy. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shrimp and I'm going to place them in this breadcrumb. Now, I'm just going to do a few at a time, okay, ladies? Don't crowd the bowl. And I'm actually going to drizzle. I'm using um, cookie sheet. I'm going to just drizzle that with a little olive oil, not too much. We don't want it floating in there trying to make sure I'm in the camera. Can you all see me? Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this panko and I'm gonna toss the shrimp in there. Now, the reason why I like to use both the um, regular fine Italian breadcrumbs and the panko is the fine ones really grab a hold of the shrimp and then the panko ones really create a nice crisp texture. Okay, so you see, see what that looks like? Did I get it even on all sides? No, I didn't. Um, see, the panko doesn't stick as good as the regular Italian breadcrumbs. But you know what, honestly, I'm gonna, the other thing I could have done, which I didn't think of it before, I actually could have put these through my little mini chop, which would have been fine. So I'm just patting those bread, that breadcrumb on there, just giving it a little help to stick. But like I said, normally I use the fine Italian breadcrumbs mixed with a little bit of panko, okay? And the garlic smell is very evident in this dish. And uh, some of you have come to my home for different little gatherings and I have made this for you and it's been a big hit over the years. So um, I know that you'll enjoy making this yourself at home. Hi, Wendy! Hello, my love. Wendy's had my shrimp. Okay, so I'm gonna continue adding my shrimp into this panko breadcrumb. And you know, there's no waste here at all. Whatever is left in this bowl, I'm gonna just drizzle onto 
the shrimp. And um, I have to admit, this dipped in. Hey, Mary Pellerito. I think you had these at my house too, actually. <laughs> um, so many people that know me, this is kind of like one of those things. Hi, Terry Boyle. I know you've had these shrimp. Um, you know, there's no waste here. Everything is good. I love to take like Italian bread and uh, dip it in the kind of a little scraping the, the pan at the end of um, the meal. It's just really special. It's really good. So I'm going to, you know, again, I'm covering these with the panko and I'm going to drizzle with um, whatever is remaining in this bowl. See, all that yumminess is at the bottom of the bowl. It doesn't get wasted. And I'll probably actually add a little more of these. Um, I'll probably add a little more olive oil to this before I put it in the oven. And these shrimp, you know, depending on the size, shrimp don't have to cook long. You want to cook them on a little bit of a higher heat, like 350 to 375, depending on your oven in the middle rack, because you really um, don't want them to cook too slow. They'll get dried out. Because, you know, there's no fat in shrimp. So <laughs> that's kind of a rule of thumb. So again, this is just for me and Phil. So um, I don't know if we're going to have any leftovers because this is one of his favorite things. And like I said, I added a little lemon this time, uh, which I normally don't. But because I'm going more of a Greek version, a lot of times I actually like to make, um, I'm going to just... Make sure I got these evenly coated. You can stuff these shrimp with uh, crab meat, which is really yummy. You take like crab meat and you saute it with some breadcrumb, garlic, olive oil, parsley. And then I, what I do is I, I kind of curl the shrimp a little bit and I stick like a dollop on the top. And that's very, very yummy. If you want to kick it up a notch, okay, for a special occasion. The other thing I like to do with this, I like to make like a fresh marinara, just a fresh tomato, garlic, olive oil, basil, um, sauteed fresh tomatoes, and put that over pasta and then serve this shrimp on top of it. That is very special also. And again, none of, nothing I make, you've been with me now, and you know that nothing I make really takes all that long. So I'm going to... I'm just gonna drizzle. Actually, I wanted to get a little more garlic and I'm gonna scrape the sides of this, of this dish so we can get on to the next. Hey, Jeannie from North Carolina. She's also a wonderful cook, loves to be in the kitchen, loves the Lord. You know, I, I have to tell you, there's nothing that brings me greater joy than to talk about Jesus and talk about food. And I do think the two go together because, you know, God was all about feasting. And, um, you know, his love for us is a feast. He says that man cannot live on bread alone, but, but by every word of God. So when you have the word of God and you have the feasting, you are a rich man, a rich woman. And, you know, I this morning's teaching I did was... Um, about us being the princess and, and God being our king. And, you know, there is a banquet that is waiting for us in heaven one day. And I look forward to that day when all God's people will rejoice and, and praise him all in the same place. But right now we're scattered around this world. And, you know, for such a time as this, we're in a kind of a crazy season. But it's okay because you know what? God is faithful. He knows our tomorrows. He's not afraid of the coronavirus. So, okay. Now, what'd you think of that? Pretty easy, right? Okay. The next thing we're going to do, and I'm going to use some of, some of my same ingredients. I'm actually using farro. You know, farro is an ancient grain. Um, it's really good, and this is, you know, just for Phil and I, obviously, so we don't need that much, but for you and your family, you probably make a little more. So whatever I, um, you know, whatever I put here is going to be, you know, maybe less ingredients than you would use. So just adjust accordingly, I'm just breaking up any lumps. I'm going to use, I'm actually just going to use the oil from this garlic, because raw garlic is very potent. 
So I'm going to use a tiny bit of this raw, tiny. I'm actually just using more of the olive oil than the actual garlic because raw garlic is very strong. I'm actually going to use some fresh basil, which honestly, this is like, I keep saying this is the last of my basil, but um, the Lord keeps providing just a little more for the next recipe. The next thing I'm going to put in here is some Palomate olives. Like I said, I'm going a little Greek with this dish. I have some red onions and cut up cucumbers. Everything I do, I like to do in a bite size. Um, the onions I like to really mince fine, but my cucumbers, I like them bite size, not too small, not too big. And then I'm going to add some tomatoes that I already had cut up. Okay. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is... I'm gonna cut up some some cheese. Now I'm using, now normally I would use feta cheese, but I don't have it. So I am using ricotta salad. Okay, so I'm putting that cheese in here. It actually is a great combination of flavors and it really, um, it's got that little twist, that little zing to it, like feta cheese. So it's, I think it's gonna be really terrific in this salad. You know, I like to use what I have in the house. And especially during a time of the coronavirus, we don't really have a lot of options, do we? So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of red wine vinegar. And I'm going to squeeze a little lemon juice and I actually I'm going to do some lemon zest too. You know lemon zest um, just makes everything better. Brighter, adds color, adds beautiful color. And I think I'm going to add some of that to my shrimp also. Okay. Okay, so this was pretty basic. So we have our nice Greek version of farro salad. And I'm going to add some salt to this because there was Okay. And a touch more olive oil. And we're done. So I'm gonna cook those shrimp for about 15 to 20 minutes in my oven, depending on you know how how they look. You want them to be a nice golden brown and thoroughly cooked. Okay, look at that salad. You see that? Okay, and the shrimp, just gonna pop that in the oven. I'm actually going to drizzle it with a little more olive oil because we really, we don't want to fry it. It's going to roast, but we want it to get nice and crispy. So, you know, I just drizzled it with a little more. Okay. So that's it, friends. So um, I hope you enjoyed our time together. Hi, Gisela. Wait, what are you saying? Gisela and I are sitting outside. Aw. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us. Hi, Michelle. I'm glad you were able to make it. This one was for you. Hi, Lisa. All right, everyone. Well, God bless you. And like I said, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And know that, you know, whatever season he has us in, whatever circumstance he has him in, us in, he's with us. He has not forgotten us. And um, I pray that the joy of the Lord would be with you today. And I pray that the Holy Spirit gives you the same energy that he's given me because we got lots to do here on this earth and we don't want to waste a minute. Okay, God bless you.